Today we're going to be putting a performance calibration or a tune on my 2018 Ford Focus ST. And as we get started here we're going to show you exactly what you all need to do to put this in. What you'll need is the following tools. You'll need a 3 8 inch drive ratchet, a short extension, a long extension, an 8 millimeter socket, and of course a spark plug socket, and then of course your tune kit. You'll also need a laptop with internet access in order to do this tune install. In the box you'll find the OBD2 adapter and the cord for it, which will plug into your laptop and into the vehicle respectively. You'll also find this yellow piece of paper, at least in this case it was yellow, it may be another color on your kit, which gives you instructions on how to download the software for your laptop. There will be a voucher number, which I currently have covered up with the uh, OBD2 adapter. You'll need that code along with the username and password that you use to set up the, re the registration on the Ford Performance website in order to download your software. It also comes with four spark plugs and some supplemental instruction cards that give you additional information if you need help. Okay, the first step in installing your tune is you'll need to change out your spark plugs. As you see, your kit will come with four new spark plugs. In this case, they're dent, mine are the Denso Iridium power plugs. Make sure you gap them to the specifications that are included in your kit. If I remember right, it was 28 thousandths of an inch, but double check your instructions just to make sure, as this is crucial for it to run correctly. To change the spark plugs out, you just simply remove your front engine cover, like so, and set it aside so it's out of the way. And then you'll see your coil packs. There should be four of them here, 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 and here. There will, each of them are held in place by an 8 millimeter screw with the exception of the two end ones which have a little stud and then the wiring harness attaches to the stud. You simply just work and wiggle this off till it comes off. Be careful not to break it. And then you may need a deep well socket to get to that 8 millimeter stud to remove it so you can remove the coil pack. Once the uh, screws are out of, or the bolts are out of the coil pack, you just simply grasp the coil pack to twist it back and forth while lifting up and it will come out. A lot of people will disconnect this electrical harness. I don't see the need since, I'll, since it will turn, bend up out of the way. And then you can just sit there and simply remove the plug with your spark plug socket and then install the new one, tighten it down to the to the uh, torque specs rating in the, in the, owner, in the uh, service manual, which I can't remember right off the top of my head what that is, but do not over torque your spark plugs. Then simply put the coil pack back on, making sure it seats all the way and secure it with the stud or the bolt, depending on which one you're doing. Once that's done, you can simply put your engine cover back on and this part of the job is complete. Spark plugs have been installed. You're ready for the next phase of the installation of your ProCal software. You'll need to go to the performanceparts.ford.com website and create an account. You can do that by clicking the, the uh, create account button in the upper right corner. And then once you're logged in on your profile page, you'll want to enter all your information that it will ask for, including the voucher number from the paperwork that came with your ProCal kit. Once you have that all done, you'll want to go to the ProCal tab. It should show the date it was registered along with your voucher number, the part number, and of course, it'll have a ProCal software download link. Simply click on the link to download your software. Simply save it to someplace easy to find, such as your desktop. And then you simply just click the Save button to save it. Once the software downloads, which can take a couple of moments, depending on your internet connection, you'll be ready to install the software. Once your software has been downloaded, it's simply a matter of just installing it by going to the icon, double clicking the icon to begin the ins installation process. Just follow the prompts as, in, as shown. You'll have to accept the terms of the license agreement, of course. And click next. Click next to install to the software location. It will install the software. It will then prompt you to install the USB driver, which will pop up in a second window. Simply click Next, accept the agreement on it, click Next. It will then say that it's been successfully installed, click Finish. 
and then this will give you the options to where it'll start the ProCal 3 software, create the desktop shortcut, or create a quick launch icon. Simply click finish when you have those set up and it will start the software. at the car and ready to start the installation process. To do that you'll need to take your little dongle and plug it into your OBD2 port which is under your dash on the lower left hand side under the steering wheel. You want to plug that in and on your laptop you want to start your ProCal 3 software by clicking the little icon that looks like a lightning bolt and the Ford Performance program will start up. Once the program starts up, you'll have some instructions that are kind of like a quick reference guide just to get you started. There is also a PDF file on the Ford Performance website which will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the install. I highly recommend downloading this and, and reading through it before starting the process. Download the one at download it at the time you go to do the install because that way you ensure you have the, the most up-to-date version of the instructions. You'll want to connect the dongle to your USB port on your laptop and as soon as you do so you'll notice that the volt battery voltage meter in the upper left corner will show the battery voltage of the vehicle. There also on the right hand side will be a will be kind of like a uh, percentage of completeness gauge that shows you exactly how far it is in the process, kind of like a progress monitor. The next step is to go ahead and turn the vehicle on by hitting the either the key or in this case it'll be the, uh, the uh, push to start button. Do this with your foot off the brake so the engine does not actually start. If you notice, it's probably hard to see, but you'll see the VIN number of the vehicle appear along with the PCM firmware number along with other information on your vehicle just to make sure that it is communicating with the vehicle correctly. Next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to go to the program section actually download section and there you'll see your there you'll see your vehicle information all set up you'll enter your pass you'll enter your password and your email address that you use to re register the site and then you'll click on the download once the download has completed it will go through and prepare you for the rest of the install process once the required info once you enter the required information it will begin downloading the uh, file from Ford's website and then it'll automatically, once it's fully downloaded, it will automatically open up to the program tab. Click on program to begin. As you can see here, it does kick up a message telling you to attach a battery charger. This can take quite a while, quite a while usually about 20 minutes or so. And what you'll want to do is make sure that there is enough battery to completely, or to completely reprogram the vehicle. Once you get the battery char charger connected, go ahead and click OK and then just simply wait for the program to, re or to, to reflash the computer in your car. Generally, the actual programming or flashing process is fairly straightforward. Uh, basically, what you'll do is just simply follow the on-screen instructions. Also, I would rec highly recommend downloading the PDF instruction file for this tune as they do update it from time to time and the procedure may change between the time this video is recorded and when you actually install your tune. So for that reason, I'm not going to go into full depth about how to actually do the actual flash from the software itself at this point as in the future this may change. What I would recommend doing though is once the installation is completed, you'll want to go through and go over to the Diagnose tab. With the engine off, you'll want to go through and read any DTCs to see if that it stored any trouble codes that could be related to the tune. Sometimes they don't always go in. And there will be more information in the PDF file about this if there happen to be any DTCs and what to do. Also calling the Ford Performance Tech Hotline at the 800 number included with your kit is a is a godsend in the in the event that something's going wrong. If you do have DTCs, once you get them situated, figure out what's causing them and get them corrected, you simply can clear the DTCs using the clear DTC button. And then also I strongly recommend doing the key 
off engine on self test which is right here to make sure that everything is good there as well as the key on engine running self test as a final note you also want to go over to the configure tab where you'll see this Optane Adjust option and the Profile Learning Adjust option. There's also an option to adjust for axle ratio changes if, the, if you have changed the axle ratio from the stock setting or from the stock specification. And then there's also an option over here on the right hand side to change the tire size if you're running different size tires than stock. About the Octane Adjust what this does is this allows the computer in your car to adjust for differences in octane, especially if you don't have exactly the best fuel in the world in the area in which you live. Here in Iowa, where I live, we have 91 octane with an occasional station that may carry 93 octane. Remember, this tune requires 91 octane or higher. 93 octane is preferred, but since it's not really available at every gas station, sometimes you get stuck running 91 octane. So using the octane adjust option, will allow your car to compensate for changes in octane if you happen to have to run a slightly lower octane. I would not go lower than 91 octane though just to be on the safe side as it can cause engine damage due to detonation and pre-ignition. There's also a profile learning option here which will allow the car to use different spark tables and allows it to better detect detonation or pre-ignition issues in the event that they should occur. I recommend turning both of these to on. When you turn the profile learning option on, what will happen is it will set a check engine light in your car. It will also state that that is turned on down here in this section. And it will tell you to rev the engine past 4000 RPM repeatedly until the check engine light goes off, indicating that it has learned the new profile for your spark timing curves. Once that's done, you're pretty much good to go. Now the file that is created during the flashing process will also store a copy of your original factory pro, uh, calibration in the event that you ever need to go back to it. Whatever you do, do not lose this file. In fact, I strongly recommend making multiple copies of it and backing it up in a safe place. As I, as I said, you will need this to restore the tune back to the factory setting in the event that you have to do so for further, like if there's, like for the uh, purge can or purge canister recall on the focus for example before having that done you will want to flash it back to the factory configuration before taking it in to have the recall done as it can have problems doing the recall installation for the updated software on the PCM if the tune is in place then of course once they have completed the recall simply just reinstall the tune using the same instructions as before If you have any other questions, simply comment them down in the, in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe this video. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.